Tonight on This Week in Mad Men, John Hamm makes his directorial debut, Betty packs on a couple LBs, Peggy has to hire someone with a penis, and Don investigates how Brian Jones makes girls feel. All that and more on the show that's always had a Jew, thereby making it more modern, it's This Week in Mad Men. Welcome to This Week in Mad Men, and we're, we're experimenting with our own product placement this week. Uh, amazing show, we're gonna jump right in. Uh, my name is Lon Harris, I will be your host. Uh, joining me are my co-hosts for this week. To my immediate left, Ms. Jamie Foxx. To her immediate left, Ms. Janie Haddad. And to her immediate left, Ms. Starley Kine, who is writing a column for CapitalNewYork.com about Mad Men. So right. you've come to the right place yeah. for a thorough That's, and in-depth discussion. I'm glad it's not like an Everybody Loves Raymond. <laughs> yes, that would be inconvenient. Yeah. If and we... also, we would need a time machine. Right, because there's, there's no more. We could be going through the box set. We could be like halfway through season two on the Raymond box. AV Club recaps mm -hmm. canceled. Shows that are off there. It's a, it's a thing. Really, they're digging through Firefly oh, no. even as oh, we no. speak. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot. There's a lot to talk about. We will just jump into uh, this week's episode of Mad Men. It was on last night. It was called Tea Leaves. Uh, kind of an kind of an obvious. Usually, the episode titles are a little are a little like sort of clever in a way, and this one was very sort of an obvious reference, um, which I guess maybe some of our panelists feel like was kind of the staple of the entire show last night, that it was a little little on the nose, a little obvious we were talking before the show. Uh, in, in some ways, I think it felt like the first regular episode of the season, like we had those two starter episodes and they were kind of just, here's where everybody is and here's kind of setting everything up, and now we had the first like regular episode of the season where there's just kind of a self-contained plot line. Um, lots of stories that were introduced that will sort of probably carry us through the season that we'll have to talk about. But uh, to start off, like, what was everybody's thoughts on the episode of the episode as a whole? And did you guys feel like there was too much Betty, which seemed to be a common internet complaint? Uh, I don't feel like there was too much Betty. I mean, because we didn't see her at all. There, there was, was a still, lot was of Betty. There was a lot of Betty. Though, <laughs> in, 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 in all ways, there was a lot of Betty. Was there too much Betty? There's too oh. much of Betty. I didn't yes. know that you meant. Yeah, right. a little yeah. bit of both. I get it. <laughs> I, I, in my personal opinion, it wasn't my favorite episode. I'm just gonna throw it out there. That might be controversial in the in the in the blogosphere to say, but it would. Uh, I didn't I didn't think it was too much Betty. I'm actually glad that they found a way to weave Betty back into the storyline because I think her character is pretty integral to, you know, sort of setting up what's going on in in the in the time period and yeah. Don's life. I mean, he's obvious, she's obviously because yeah, we have a lot figure. of questions about Don and his marriage, and that's that sort right. of plays a lot into it. So I didn't think it was too much, Betty, but it it wasn't my favorite episode for various reasons that we'll get into, obviously. Obviously, but, um, but that was not my criticism. Yeah, it's not. I feel like it's not. I feel like it's it's not like a problem to have too much of one character. Mm -hmm. And like, if no, Be I've never wanted to phase Betty out of the show. Yeah. I feel like it was. Um, I feel like it was kind of a, uh, just a gimmick episode. I actually don't feel like it was the real episode, because to me, this episode, I feel like, will go down in history as actually being totally disposable, because I don't think we'll ever see Fat Betty again. And so to me, <laughs> last yeah. week actually felt like definitely setting the tone of what the season's about, which is aging and time and everyone feeling like irrelevant. And this one, I know, is also about Betty feeling like that, but I just am so not convinced that that fat suit is here to stay. And so I feel like, you, I, if you're, my major problem was, I don't mind seeing Betty aging. I like seeing Betty aging, but the idea of com not committing to the fat suit, which I think is going to happen, makes me kind of, it makes me not take it seriously. Yeah. We, should, we should talk about this because the, according to the writers and everything that was written, this was filmed when January Jones was actually pregnant, so that explains why they had to kind of do something not, with her. But, yeah, yeah, but she wasn't that fat. Exactly. Like, obviously, she, right. she like but that. The, Yes, the, clearly they had makeup to give her, especially in the jowls. She had she prosthetic had this, chin or something, yeah. right? Yeah, and it, it, I thought it was a little distracting. Yeah. I mean, you always kind of with TV, and especially Mad Men when they've done this before, the, the aging makeup's never... But I disagree. The, I find fat Peggy one of the greatest creations mm -hmm. on television. And, in, I, and I, one, I mean, yeah. I really think Fat Peggy is a masterpiece because you didn't 
know what was going on. Mm -hmm. They totally it made it dramatic, subtle. So it was so more. dramatic. And like the fact that you look back and wow, and now it seems so obvious that she was pregnant, you had no idea. You mm -hmm. really were just like, is the actress getting fat? Is the character getting mm -hmm. fat? Is this what's going on? And you, and pregnant was kind of like the last thing that you were yeah. guessing. And it was really, really, I've gone back and watched it and the way they form, like make her arms bigger and they make mm -hmm. everything buzzed is so good. And this felt like, a fat suit. Yeah, that was that was gradual too, which I think helped them. And, and right. even even characters would have like at first it was just little digs or little like oh maybe yeah. a few less lunches and yeah oh, and yeah. it it, it had like dress and yeah it had the right. season to it was develop. So whereas weird this one was, too. It was such a weird thing to watch. Right. Because it wasn't it was, the main plot of the show. And it was a new character then. I mean, it was, it was so you're just getting to know her, and all yeah. of a sudden this is happening to her. Whereas this episode, even just the first shot is Betty can't. Zip up her dress, and, and she's just so big. Like, she's all of a sudden, like I understand yeah, that, big. like women, I do think you thicken up, but like, or some women thicken up, but I think it, it just, it seemed too, too much. Well, like only a year had passed, or some seven months. Since the, like, yeah, yeah, seven yeah months it was since October, and now we're in July. Yeah, presumably and she was like a beauty point. queen when she met. I mean, like, so it was a very drastic. And I also feel like, a, a, like the character of Betty would not let it go that far. Well, like she was having, though, she was having she trouble had, reducing. I know, but even though, like, I know how she, like, depressed she is, and she wasn't happy, and she mentioned that to Dom, but I don't yeah. think, like, she, you know, she still wanted to be a model, like, back in season one. Like, I don't right. think she would have let, let it get that the, badly. She suddenly and, developed food issues. She's and, eating yeah. bugles on the yes. couch, and then the, the closing Which shot is already the what cream. Pete Campbell's wife has. We already actually are dealing with that, because last mm -hmm. week it was showing Pete Campbell's wife eating the cereal and, not, and, and, and out, of the, out of the box and right. not getting dressed. And she actually seems more like the depressed wife at home who doesn't know what to do in the suburbs. Betty, like the modern day version of Betty, is like on the elliptical every day. Right. Like mm -hmm. all she is doing is and working out. And yeah. <laughs> right. And so I just feel like it just it didn't it did not really track. I also mm -hmm. thought it was odd with the Betty storyline that they would recycle sort of the cancer th thing, like mm -hmm. with Anna Draper having cancer, and then she's having this cancer scare. But then we were talking too. Starley and I were saying how they didn't necessarily there was no whiff of the Anna Draper. Right. I mean, or did I, you find yeah. that? Well, I, I had in my notes that it, it has this impact on Don, and he's very fatalistic about it. That he's telling Roger before Betty's even gotten back to him, like Betty has cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, maybe but I didn't pick up on the Anna thing. Like I didn't even remember Anna had the cancer until Janie told me, and I feel like that was definitely not communicated from Don that he was th thinking about somebody yeah. else. It, it definitely was not brought up or, or but, dealt with. In, in the context of this episode. And like the underlying, I felt like they didn't have to have, have him like flash to a picture of Anna on his desk or anything. Yeah. But something was missing from like how he was reacting, I felt. For I, I think that's I think that's fair. That, that, I, I, that may have been the decision making was like, would it be too on the nose or too cheesy to have an actual reference to it? So uh, I, I sort of had it in the back of my mind. Um, but yeah, it definitely was not called out specifically that Don just went through a cancer scare with somebody else. Right. Not a cancer ago. scare, like a death. Like right. she actually, she, it was like the reason to be scared. Yeah, she succumbed. Um, so I, I did think the one thing I really did like about the Betty storyline this week was her initial visit to the doctor, where I felt like they were they were intentionally doing a bit of like misdirection, like keeping you guessing. We're, we're so ready to assume the worst about Betty in a lot of ways, and so she goes to the doctor. She's asking for diet pills. She wants this quick, easy fix. She, you know, she she can't deal with the the reality of her situation. It's kind of just like, oh, I just you know I can't have trouble uh, tr trouble dropping. Uh, and even the doctor at one point is you know basically calls her on, you know, that th this isn't really, like, a problem, and it's it's all in her head, this is a psychological, it's psychosomatic, there's nothing really wrong with you. Everything until they find that, that lump, and then all of a sudden you're confronted with, you know, uh, maybe there is really something wrong, maybe this is the first time uh, there's actually... Well, did you, I, yeah, I would have, I actually felt like the cancer, the whole sickness thing, though, was a distraction. I was so much more into the idea of just watching, like, D Betty dealing with not being pretty anymore. It's so mm -hmm. much, it's more interesting to me. Because can't like, she also doesn't ultimately have cancer, so I yeah. was right, kinda, exactly. I was you actually bummed out because I was like, off. Betty being a fading beauty is forcing them to like her character to go in another direction, and the whole season is about aging, and obviously that's what they're telling mm -hmm. us over and over again, and so it just seemed like they're kind really of a cop out, out to me to all, all of a sudden be like, and then the cancer scare plot, yeah. and I, she's clearly I think going to become a speed freak as next. That's what they she's, keep hinting. Yeah, well the, well, the diet pills she's thing. She's not staying up, yeah. in the fat suit like that. There's no way January Jones would sign on. So they're do like uh, I'm dancing as fast as I can. Yeah. <laughs> they're, gonna do that, that's, they're gonna throw that storyline at Betty. Maybe. I mean, I, I felt like 
looking back on the episode, it seems like they brought up the cancer thing just as a way to establish what I think is probably going to be one of the ongoing plot lines, which is she and Don still have this connection that neither... Don doesn't have it with Megan. She doesn't have it with Henry. They only have it with each other. And they have that that sort of tender phone call where he calls her Birdie for the first time mm-hmm. since they were together, at least on the show. Uh, and she was the first person that he called. Uh, that, excuse me. Yeah, she was. he was the first person that she yeah, called when she couldn't right. find her husband. She can't find Henry, so immediately right. she thinks to, to call him. And there was a, even other nods to everything these characters have been through. Like, mm-hmm. you know, say that thing you always yes. say. Everything's going to be okay. So it's just hinting at the, the history that these two have that they... They don't have what their respective spouses. And they're also clearly layering in both Megan and Henry hate it when Don and Betty speak or interact. Henry's yes. brusque with Don on the phone and basically hangs up on him. And Megan, of course, does not like it whenever Betty's name comes up at all. Um, and even Betty, uh, there was that one moment I wanted to mention where uh, she refers to uh, Megan as Don's girlfriend and then has to remind herself, oh, yes. they're, they're yeah. married now. Right. So uh, I, I thought, it, uh, 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 going back to when she's at the doctor, when the doctor says, he says, oh, you're middle-aged now, or something like that's a problem with middle-aged women. Mm-hmm. When she's like yeah, still she's in her tw- yeah, 20s. Right, yeah. Isn't Fairly she still like 30? 28 or 9? No, or she's in her 30s. Oh, she's 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 de- Betty's but definitely barely, in her. But, yeah, but like, no, I, mean, I don't think Betty's that much younger than Dawn. I don't, I feel like, how much younger did she, like four years younger probably? How? I think in the first season she was like late 20s. In the first season, so and that's been what six years. Six years. So she's so, in her yeah, 30s. She, yeah, she's like early thirties. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, even if you think about the flashback episode where Don was pretty young when they hooked. I mean, he was like still a fur salesman oh, when right. they started dating for yeah. the flashback episode. So yeah, and he's definitely older. He's older than her, but the age gulf for them is not as stark as it is from him and. From I don't Megan. find the age gulf between him and Megan that stark either. Once I realize that Megan's twenty six, I'm like, it seems normal. Like I feel like when I first when I first said she was twenty in this episode, when mm-hmm. like and. That made well, more that's according sense. To Betty, yeah. I know, but like her being twenty six to me feels like twenty six is like done in that in that era, and it doesn't seem like forty and twenty six is not that scandalous. I, yeah. was, I was a little disappointed by but Megan's <laughs> age reveal. <laughs> I really was. I I was, uh, the, uh, but I'm still like stuck on the Betty thing. I'm sorry, yeah. but yeah, um, well, I got I got yeah. I got a few more. We got some more Betty we stuff. Got some more oh, there's Betty a lot stuff. of Betty to talk well, about. Well, there's really only three <laughs> main plot lines this time. There's there's Betty. There's uh, Michael Ginsburg, the new uh, the, the new, new office Jew, the new copywriter, yeah. and then uh, the Rolling Stones <laughs> and Heinz Beans. Yes, yeah. that's so true. We really don't have as much <laughs> to cover yeah. this week. But I found what I found startling about the episode with the Betty storyline is that um, even though they they did have that tender conversation where he says everything is going to be okay, it still feels to me like there's no one in Betty's life who who cares about Betty. Nobody cares about her. Like yeah. she, even though he said everything's going to be okay because she asked him to say that, he's still like, well, what am I going to do about the kids? Like what do we, you know? Like it's all sort of like she's this disposable person, yeah, and it and it was very um, sad. Because even Henry, he tries to be a good husband, but she's still just, you know, the, this this possession that he wanted, He's a that thing he for her earned. To, yeah, take care That's of. That's right. And care of. And 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 um, it, it to me, it it was it was so haunting, where she has this life threatening scare, you know, and, and there's really nobody. And then she asks her friend, "What's it like?" She's like, "It's like swimming on the ocean, and no one's there to hear your screams or wh- whatever that monologue was." Which yeah, was so I didn't, I didn't love that monologue. Sad. <laughs> but I mean, it, but that's how Betty's life is anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I that's think, why I think she didn't relate to it because she like was saying that, and then she's like, "Oh, but I'm just gonna get fat." Because I think she her normal life is so. That is her everyday life. That's her everyday life. life. It's like, isolated to begin with. That's yeah. it. That's it already. I mean, like she's already living that 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 reality. And yeah. Uh, yeah, and I mean, I think that's one thing that she's starting to realize that she's always been, you know, very in the moment kind of thinking, and now she's realizing like I really don't have a legacy. There's mortality. And, yeah, yeah, and when she yeah. looked at even like what would happen when she's gone. It's really like, oh, well, Pauline and Megan will raise my kids and they'll never hear a nice thing about me They won't about say anything again. nice. But yeah. that's it. She yeah. really doesn't have, she won't She has no anything. legacy. And there was a moment where I thought this was a, her wake-up call where she was going to actually, like, forge her own identity. Yeah. Yeah. And then she just, like, no, just ate, ate the ice cream no, at the end. And, I, yeah. and I do like her having to be with that woman. I, li- I loved it when she saw that, that lady in the doctor's office because I mm-hmm. loved that it was, like, Betty used to be too pretty to probably used to look down on this woman, and now Betty is like this invisible. As as extreme as I find the makeup to be, I love the idea of someone going from being a very, like a story about someone being very pretty to being just invisible just and an ordinary person. Yeah. person. And 
um, I think it's an interesting topic to tackle, and I do think like her having to be with that, sit with that woman, she was probably nicer to that woman than she'd probably ever been. Yeah. And she wasn't mm -hmm. just preening the whole time, because she actually had to listen to her and be like, I'm like you, I'm yeah. less than you. And mm -hmm. your kids probably love you and mine. That's and, true. Yeah. yeah. And, that uh, is an interesting. Yeah, that is. And, and um, yeah, I think, I felt like the end of the episode was, it was a little cruel to her, and the show has been cruel to Betty on many occasions, but having her so quickly, I mean, she gets the phone call that she doesn't have cancer, and there's not, she's not even given, like, one line of dialogue of relief no, she's before not. just reverting right back to... And that was intent, that was definitely intentional. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, your, yeah. your mother's obese, and she's immediately turning it well, around. Well, not only that, she was like, I mean, basically, she was like, I'm not sure if it's worth living if I'm gonna be fat, like she wasn't yeah. completely overjoyed about being staying alive because now she has to not be pretty. And which I actually do think is a real problem in her life. Like I don't fault like the, her as a character feeling terrible about not being pretty. But I also think they set up the, that Sunday thing is just to do the diet pill thing though. Like I think, it, I think really not Sally's gonna, gonna become anorexic. I mean, Sally didn't I said finish that from hers. last season, remember? Yes. Yes. I thought yeah. this Sally was gonna and we're like, become anorexic. We're getting yeah. into eating disorder decade territory mm -hmm. and I think um, like I think there, they did something. There was a different intention when she gets the phone call about not having cancer than the Sunday thing. I think the Sunday thing was about a whole different. That's setting up. Mm -hmm. you know, yes. The, the, that's what the, I thought. The coming weeks. Yeah. I didn't. Really, that's interesting because I didn't really even think of the seat. significance of Sally not finishing her Sunday. More the significance of that shot of Betty. Like, well, here we go. Yeah. Pulling well, it also over. last season too. Remember, she was always like pushing her food around the plate, and never eating it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. And right. also, there was a lot of pressure on her. To be skinny. pretty and yeah. skinny, like mm -hmm. that, that she would say things that her her mom echoed to her to Sally, like you know, yeah. S I don't remember specifically, but there were there were things. Oh, when she cut her hair and stuff. Like yes. That. Right. right. Well, yeah. right. It was about you know, right. Physical her, appearance. Her appearance that's and being right. pretty, and yes, uh, yes, that's how that's how you get accepted. Mm -hmm. and that that's basically all Betty has to teach her her children in some ways. Um, two more things, that, real quick, I want to deal with with Betty, and then we'll we'll move on. Uh, one is. I, what did you guys? I, I'm usually willing to give a little bit of dramatic license to pass. It's a TV show, you know. You got to let it pack it in. But having a psychic come over to their table while two characters are sitting there mm. to me felt a little too too much for wasn't me. Wasn't it? Like, wasn't it like the, a tea room though? It was yes. a tea room, but it was. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. And in New York uh, in the '60s, at a tea room, that would be a regular thing that happened. And I'm just ill-informed. And I, 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 I did. I, I looked it up, and I yeah. didn't find anything. You didn't find <laughs> it. I looked up like psychic New York tea. I mean, room she was like a something. tea reader. I feel like it was plausible that it, if you were in like uh, one of those like New York kind of hotels, so that would be like a, a gimmicky thing that they would yeah. have. But I, I did think it was too. Plays a bit like a screenwriter's contrivance. Like, well, I gotta throw the, I gotta bring some of these so issues then, like, in. So then, like the title of the episode I, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Sort of well, and just the whole <laughs> idea of you know, so this woman can tell her, oh, you're a rock, okay. and you've had people who love. You, so you can get her expression where mm -hmm. she's realizing that none of this is. Yeah, true. I know. I felt it was like this, this more than a lot of episodes had more explicit screenwriter tricks. So. Right. Like mm -hmm. even well, that, like when when, when too. well, the, yeah, the I, yeah, I didn't. I, the <laughs> dream wasn't effective to me, but I feel and I feel like even that, like say what you always say thing, is such a classic. That they always say that in movies, and then it was such a <laughs> letdown where he's like, "You mean it's gonna be okay?" Like it wasn't. That's not delivering anything. And I felt like her setting it up that way, say that you always say, just felt like somebody. No offense to, I know a target write these things, but this one <laughs> felt like I could see the, I could see the, the, yeah. the no, writing. The, I definitely more. think you could feel the hand of the screenwriter yes. on this episode yeah. more than an average episode. And, and yeah, the dream was the other part. I was gonna be like, that's a little on the nose. And and uh, I know Weiner started off on the Sopranos where they used to fall back on the like dream but they, but sequence. They, that's what, but because of the Sopranos, the dream sequence, it's so. Amped up it's, like the stand, like what you're expecting. Like the dream, Sopranos dream sequences are great. Yeah, well, they're very like lynchy and, and yeah. 15, 20 minutes yeah. long. And they and actually, yeah. and I don't think you should ever have dream sequences unless it conveys something you don't already know. Like in mm -hmm. Sopranos, he would dream about who, like pussy, big pussy being yeah. guilty and stuff. Like it always, every time he'd fall asleep, there'd be something that his subconscious was telling him. This one, she was like, she dreamt that she died. And, and it just and it, 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 it it just replayed the same yeah. things that had already been happening to her the episode. Yeah, that. so that's it's true. A, also, we that. noted that that house was um, is like a castle, and yes. the, in the kitchen in her dream, <laughs> which is supposedly taking place in that house, was really small. Looks like her. It looks like, it's like the tiniest little kitchen. It, it must have, it have been the house. servants' kitchen, or it was that whole thing where it's like I was in my house, but it wasn't really my or house. Or it was her old <laughs> house because it looked a little yeah, bit like I, that. Yeah, that's old what house. I was thinking. It actually looked like where she and Don had lived. Oh well, maybe there was. Um, so now I have to rewatch that. Yeah. 
Austin, uh, I'm confused. Austin? I'm confused about the new house. I'm just confused. It's very by it. ostentatious. It's so it's it is like a castle, and, and I mean. Props to whoever found that location because that mm -hmm. shot was beautiful this week of them on the, on the lawn oh, with the beautiful. fireworks. And beautifully this shot. Very stark, dramatic. But but yeah, it's like they're living in Hearst But Castle is it like 1960s real estate prices or that? Like well, they I mean, could I guess, just, I how guess are Henry's they living? very well. We, we, have we ever gotten an idea of exactly how rich Henry is? I think he does very well. I know, but that yeah. house looks like is a palace. It is, yes. Like, I also think it's terrifying. It's where like the mayor yeah. should be. Yeah. It's a terrifying house. <laughs> like, he works house. for the mayor. But they, like, the house could be in, like, the American Horror Story And that, show. That, that shot, I mean, they lit it to be very imposing, yeah. And dark. Yes, dark. yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Everything's very dark. All the dark wood. The, the dark, yeah. the dark green carpet. Like, it doesn't seem like her taste at all. I'm just saying mm -hmm. that it doesn't compare to the apartment in Manhattan. <laughs> no, right. Well, then, no. Then, no. Again, well, the difference between Megan's Which taste Which is so and, fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so let, let's move on because we, we took 20 minutes on Fat Betty, which I guess. <laughs> which is a lot of people love figure. Fat Betty, though. So we a lot are of a little. Don't like Fat Betty a lot. Of, it was a lot very. Of, it was a very contentious episode online. A lot of people loved Fat Betty. A lot of people really hated Fat Betty. Yeah. Uh, but we'll we'll move on to another to a, a brand new character. We actually had two characters introduced uh, this week who probably are going to be bigger characters moving forward. First was Michael Ginsburg, who is the new copywriter who's going to be on the Mohawk account. We'll talk about him in a moment. And the other was uh, Don. Don's new secretary, Don. Don. Mm -hmm. I when say Dawn and Dawn, but it's really Dawn and Dawn. Dawn right? and Dawn. Dawn yeah. and Dawn. But, you know, <laughs> the confusion between the two already fodder feel, for, yeah. for jokes. Dawn made, I feel, I'm having, I have a problem with the Dawn storyline. Because I worry that, I worry that the show is out of its element when it comes to the race stuff. I really do, like, I get nervous because I feel like, I feel like it's never fully figured out how to address it, and it clearly wants to. And I found it so strange that like the whole, the, the beat of the way the episode ended last time was this big moment. And then Don suddenly working there. And I don't know exactly what I wanted. Like I don't want like some like racial slurs happening. I don't want to hear the characters have to be more racist, but I worry that they're just going to sneak Don in. And then I found it weird when she was in the meeting and just like hanging out with everybody. And you're just like, you guys are like racist and yeah, yeah. don't want her there. And we know it and it's because of your time. but. Are we really just not going, we're going to give a whole episode to Michael's introduction and we're just, the one, the big race thing that you constantly do not know how to handle, all the Mad Men people, we're once again going to kind of like tuck away. Yeah. It was uh, weird. She, she, it, it was a little weird. I mean, they do tend to do stuff like that. They like having a big momentous thing happen and then you get an episode right. where it's just, it's it's ongoing. And I then know, that's going to next week. I'm thinking like they're going to eventually deal with it. I, I know, but this to. is like a, this is not just like an incident. Like we often like, well like, Joan won't be in an episode or Peggy won't be in an episode, but this just seemed like a strange, I was a little skeptical of if the if, if the show knows how to handle it still. Like I, 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 well, I think, there was also <laughs> a significant time jump. So like there was like a month. Yeah, it was jump. May, it was May last, time oh, really? because it was yeah. Memorial Day and now oh. it's, it's uh, now July 4th. It's 4th of July. So they gave, gave them like so that months. makes me feel like they're glossing, that's exactly why I feel like they're glossing over. They're just like, we handled it. We didn't have to write that, yeah. their well, she, transition. She's there and they, they do, they, I they think have, they're going to eventually do it. Oh, this I thing. think there yeah. has to be so an episode be okay. on Dawn. There has to be an yeah. episode oh, on Dawn. There absolutely will not, be an episode where you get to know her better and she's more established. If the season character. ends and they haven't dealt with I mean, I know they that, will, but there's yeah. something, I just, it's you're the nervous only, about it. It's the only time when I watch it where I, I, I feel for the writers. I, I mean, I feel for them all the time, but I, I mean, I just think it's a hard topic and it's, Time and time and time again, Mad Men has not quite known what to do about it. Yeah, I think like, they... Because their world of their characters are not actually in the world of like, yeah. the civil rights. I mean, they, I know what they, I know when they have talked about it, but I just found it kind of, I found it kind of, it seemed, it seemed too light. Yeah, when the, when the show started, they were definitely had this ability to, they could make their show and it really isn't connected to that. Yeah. And you would occasionally have a bit in the background a character mentioning something going on. And like Roger, Blackface on. Roger is like an amazing right. way of handling it where like it's so, but it again is like through the lens of how he would deal with it. Right. And it's always Roger dealing with it, actually. Yeah, like, and in this episode again, star. it's always darkest before the yeah. dawn I know, and, like, and he gets the, oh, he gets yeah, the lines. Oh yeah, that was... And he actually, there's a lot of... And this is uh, why they should have never gotten rid of Paul Kinsey. We did. <laughs> uh, but yeah. yeah, casual racism yeah, they, was an undercurrent through the entire episode. But I mean, so they're obviously setting after something. After a while, they're going to have to stop being like casually racist and actually like develop the black characters. Like I think, yeah. you know what I mean? Like after a while, you're just going to be like, you can't keep right. addressing well, I, it that way because right. we're actually going to start They're going to have to have an episode, like a suitcase style episode that is like... 
here's the you know well, what we're doing. Be with, hard. I mean, that's like a that's race. a bar. It is, but it's like, like, like an episode where like it's <laughs> largely devoted to that as a storyline, as opposed to just. Back what did you make of left. Harry stopping at her desk and being awkward? Like, what was that moment? Was he awkwardly hitting on her, or was he being racist towards her? Well, I think he was or trying was to just... like. I think he was trying to be friendly. Yeah. And I think they were trying to be like. I mean, I mean, the whole thing was like we're making a joke that we can't tell you guys apart. Clearly, we can tell you guys apart in right. every way. And I think it was more like Harry. Oh, well, just... I didn't even yeah. get. Yeah, I mean, Harry's I just was being okay. awkward with everybody this season, yes. and they've oh kind God. of made him comic relief exactly. now, and that's how I read it. That yeah. this is mm -hmm. just one example that we're seeing of how everybody in the office is now going to have to struggle with how His to relate to this woman and how to deal with her yeah. when they're at work oh, and yeah. how to be professional and you know. Yeah, he was being friendly. I, that's, okay. So that's how I read it. Is just he doesn't know what he's because for a minute <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I, he's not going to say something off. Like he's already said so many. He embarrassing said done several things. Off awkward this, things. Yeah. <laughs> that was another, uh, uh, the storyline where they went to see the stones. Mm -hmm. um, that was, I, I thought, kind of a hole in the episode where he signs the wrong band. The trade wins. The trade mm -hmm. wins. Yeah. But doesn't he go, doesn't he get backstage access because of that teenage girl who's a mega fan of the stones? How yeah. would he not know? I think you're right. Again, it was the so, implication like, what that in Harry there? gets <laughs> yeah, stoned and he's such an idiot. That but why wouldn't the teenage girl, girl that tell him? Like, she's like, she, it doesn't unless make any she, sense. Unless he just was wandering around and got confused. Yeah, it, 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 it's not, yeah, it was not was clear the, the sequence of events, definitely, mm -hmm. uh, that happened when you leave Don and what happened back yeah. there. And also, uh, we, we have a clip. I, 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 I'm, we're not planning on showing it right now. I'm sorry, I jumped ahead. We can talk about the stones. Uh, but I have a clip of the trade wins, so we can get an oh, idea good. of how hard it would be to mistake these guys for the Rolling Stones. Can we play the clip of the trade wins? Say, and this is their song, "New York's a Lonely Town." Do it, like you So the, those guys are from Rhode Island. There's no chance that you would encounter those guys and be like, this is Mick and, Mick and Keith. And, you know, like, yeah. there's just, that would never happen. Did I don't they, care how stoned you are. Did they look yeah. like that when they opened for the Stones? Or I mean, did they that have was presumably hair? from the 60s. I don't, I don't, I don't. Well, why know would, I mean, Harry, like I found it all kind of false, that whole storyline. Because I also think, I know that they're trying to say that everyone's getting old and everyone's out of touch. I don't think they are as out of touch as they're trying to say. Like, I just didn't, like, they're, they were a major thing, and they're not, like, 60 years old. And Harry, I mean, Also, yeah. Harry, like, hobnobs with right. Hollywood types. Like, he even says that he, you know, entertains, you know, yeah. pay, right. you know. And they're a major, major band. They're not just, like, the first radical wind into something. Yeah, I mean, I... And they've already been well, established Jagger, for years. Mick Jagger is very distinctive looking. Right. So is Keith Richards. <laughs> what I thought was odd about it is Don actually says at a couple points, like, oh, we should have tried, we should have talked him out of this at the dinner table. And it's like... Yeah, why? Why didn't he? Like, I understand because that this, this season is being more because of the beans. This is new Don rolling this over is new and Don. taking everything. Right? He yeah, doesn't I mean, care. They did set that up that that Although, Don yeah. is it's behind he's going to be more agreeable, and they need to keep Klein. So Klein's ideas are suddenly a lot better. But this is one that not only one is it very unlikely to happen. Mm -hmm. But but two, it's just not. It's a beans in the Rolling Stones is a weird fit, and or keep him weird. I felt like what's weird about this episode is like it's we established a lot that what was so great about I thought about the premiere was that Don was just this new person, mm -hmm. and and then and it made sense when he checked out of the pitch meeting. You're just like, oh, Don doesn't care anymore. He's just phoning it in. He just wants to sleep with Megan all the time. Yeah. And this one, it was like Don, the Don that we knew exhibiting the traits that we were told in that last episode, but acting like the Don that we've always seen, and it didn't match up. You know, like, yeah. he, he still seemed totally like regular Don in this one. Well, but when we get into Michael Ginsburg, I think that it was odd how, like, he was, com Don was, like, completely wooed by him and was, like, very taken yeah. by him. I didn't that, think that, uh, that, I that, that was, was out of character. I was wooed by Michael Ginsburg. <laughs> I was wooed by I him. I actually feel like, I, th I thought that Don, I didn't think Don was a sucker. I feel like he really, he was, I thought he, it, he felt not boring to Don, and Don's so bored. And, and the work being very good up front is something that is going to impact Don's opinion of somebody as well. I mean, he's, he's really all about, like, it doesn't matter what you say, it's the work that matters. And right. this guy it's, comes mm -hmm. in with this Portfolio yeah. that's but he seemed strong. like alert. I feel like what, listening to Michael Ginsburg. Like I, 
I feel like I'm gonna have a little bit of a problem if people keep if people are gonna try to tell me that Michael Ginsburg is an unlikable character, it's gonna be a problem because I found him like pretty much from get, the get go. I, I mean, I'm not saying you are, but like I know what they were, tr they were I know they were trying to be like like she was overbearing. I know how he was with Peggy, and I know that she why she was weirded out, and I liked her talk, her speech to him. But like but that I, I'm really likable. Or he just like felt vibrant, like right. he, like the whole he was thing. Charming too, so, I thought. Right. Yeah, and this whole show is like now that we've decided that the show is about like death and everyone aging and everyone feeling depressed with their lives. Suddenly, this guy comes in. He's him and Megan are really excited about their and lives, he's right? Eager, and he's eager, and he's he's um, fresh. Like he yeah. has a he has a fresh yeah. Yeah. take. Or and that, and I think that Don generational that. shift is what this whole season clearly is at least partially about. And. Ginsburg, in, in a couple ways, represents being that sort of transitional figure of the younger generation. I mean, I thought it was interesting that the last scene you see with him is he goes home to his, like, immigrant father who he lives yeah. with. Again, a mirror mm -hmm. of Peggy from season one where she lived at home, probably yeah. in Brooklyn where it seemed like both yeah. of those scenes were oh, taking yeah. place. And then the dad's reaction upon hearing he gets this job is to do this, like, Hebrew prayer, prayer with right. him. And so again, and then you cut right from that scene, and I want to talk a little bit about how the editing was done, but you cut right from that scene to... Uh, Betty and Sally and the ice cream sundae. So it definitely seemed like the whole episode is playing up this, you know. Do you think they're setting up Peggy? Younger people I mean, that's like the whole season. But is. the whole season is like mirrors really and patterns. Yeah. But are they? And then Don had that again. I thought a little on the nose backstage discussion with the girl. Like you just don't want us to have fun because you didn't have fun. We're worried about you. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I, I feel like that was so out of character. It was a little on. And the also, nose. he likes young girls now. He's whole. He's married to a young girl. Like yeah. I just don't. I found that like I found that whole Rolling Stone thing so much less effective than him and the, him getting stoned with the Bohemians. Like when he did that mm -hmm. in that second season or something, and yeah. he walked out of the room. It was so mm -hmm. good because he seemed scared. Like when he was, he seemed so scared by the weirdness of it, of this really raw life. Mm -hmm. And California Dawn, and Cal like that. Yeah, and yeah. this one is like Rolling Stones are a commercial packaged entity that he would not be mm -hmm. all that that he wouldn't have to be that out of touch with. It's not like just. I know that they're like a radical thing, but at this point, Don's kind of, he's done crazier things than going to, going to a Rolling Stone concert. Yeah. And I felt like they were really trying to be like, he's an old man now. They're, they're playing up, yeah, last, last week and then this week too, they're definitely playing up him being very out of place. And he's a character we're not used to before this season, maybe the last season a little bit, but we're not used to seeing him very out of place. He's usually in his element. But yeah, Megan says, you're so square, you have edges. You have, right. And he <laughs> says, I need to look like the man. Oh, man. Yeah. But I think and they're like, forcing it. I feel like they're writing these lines, but I'm not as, buying not with what's coming across. It's not as subtle as previous episodes. Yeah. This was not a subtle episode, in my opinion. Yeah. Do no, you I, think I they're agree. setting up Peggy and Ginsburg? Yes. I, I mean, I think it, even whether I or not it happens or if there's just tension there. there. Yeah, there was chemistry One there. of them is going to want to be with the Fall other, at least, or something. Yeah, I mean, well, because they're setting up... One, normally Peggy is the number one most competitive person in the office. And this yeah. one they're setting up, everyone else is warning her. You get yeah. Stan warning her, this guy's going to come in and take your job. Don't hire anyone too good. Then you have Roger basically echoing that same thing. Uh, so, and, and she's the one usually who would be the most paranoid about but somebody else coming in and showing her But she said that she's motivated up. by, right. creative, but people. by yeah. the creative people. And maybe they're going to have a relationship that's stimulating yeah. to one another. And she's never, a had a, she's never had an equal the whole time. No, she right. never she's had She's never done. She's, right. she's never, she always is like, she's always having to work harder and prove her worth, but she's always been the most talented. And, and, and she says will. at one point, like, well, I get, you know, I do better when I'm surrounded by people that, you know, are also really good. And we, we do realize that's true. When, when she and Don collaborate, it tends to raise everybody's game a little bit. Uh, and yeah, she really hasn't had a collaborator like Danny last season. Stan, these are these are not oh, people they were on awful. her level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dan. um, yeah, Danny, like, and, and that's what, that's a, that's another thing I wanted to ask. And uh, I I am a Jew, so I feel like I'm allowed to say this. But did Mike <laughs> did Mike come off a little a little Jewy, a little like they're playing up this New York Jew sort of persona? And Danny Maybe. also established as a Jewish copywriter yes. last season, and he was short, but otherwise he didn't really play. Very I much. Do you think, I was wondering that too, because at first, when you first hear him, you're just like, oh my God. It's, it's the mm -hmm. accent, but, it's the Woody Allen style quips. I think it's and, real. I think, but, I mean, definitely the accent is, is it didn't a real strike, thing. It didn't strike false to me. I actually thought I, he was. I was impressed he's by. He's vowel focused. <laughs> <laughs> like, even that part. The vowel <laughs> focus was weird. <laughs> yeah. But I was impressed by the way he looked, because I felt like there's a lot of direction they could have gone if they really wanted to, like, make. Con Shout, Jew Jewish. Yes, they think right. And like, so his, like the way he looks, like his kind of, he looks ethnically Jewish, like mm -hmm. his dark eyebrows and like his kind of curly hair. Like it, did, he actually did seem like, like really, like second generation Jewish. And right. that, that I liked the choice of how he, that I felt like they used some restraint on. 
Yeah. Um, but I mean, giving him lines like, uh, oh, that's what they said about Mein Kampf. Kid really has a voice. I mean, <laughs> you can hear yeah. Woody Allen yes. saying that I line. Know. And it's a great line. It's funny. But, uh, you know, it, it, but it, somebody it, said, like, isn't Woody Allen, he's, a, he's on the scene by then, right? Yes. This so. is, I mean, and I think they might be playing to that, too, that this is a transitional period for Jews in American yes. culture. Where now you've got Lenny Bruce and Woody Allen yeah. and these voices who are, you know, more contemporary and very urban. And, uh, so I mean, I, I, I feel mean, like if they're going to have, like, the advertising guy who aren't Jewish talk in little sound bites, if they, like, that's the equivalent of having the Jewish guy talk in his sound bite. Yeah. Like, do true. that kind of. I mean, I, I was on the fence about it, but. Um, Ultimately, he won me over. He's weird. I he wanted, weird. I wanted to stay weird, weird, though. I'm worried that they're going to make him just talented, and I want him to be like, I miss weird Peggy. I miss yeah. like the weirdness of the first season when she, when she was crazy and, and Pete and all that. I do feel like I'm a little fatigued by the idea of like a whole season of just like talking about time and, <laughs> and, like, and, and, and just having to feel sad all the time. Mm -hmm. And I miss... Like the weirder, I miss a Pete losing hit. I, I I'm really bummed that Pete looks like he's just competing with Roger now. Cause I've always found Pete such a weird loose cannon who can do anything, and he's so scary and <laughs> terrifying and interesting to me. And like that's kind of been rubbed away. And Peggy seems a little stabilized right now, and I'm looking forward to her feeling a little crazy. And this guy, I hope that they instead of just going in like a Jewish like charming direction, I yeah. want it to be. I, I think there's definitely upset. interesting ground to explore here. The one last thing I, I had in my notes about Mike that I wanted to bring up is, it did seem like when you saw him at home with his dad, a lot of this stuff that I'm complaining about was dialed back. So then you yeah. get to the question of, is that really who he is or is this what he puts on? Because, you know, just like Roger has expectations of like, oh, you know, it's good for an agency yeah. to have a Jew now. Like, he's going to be that Jew and he's mm -hmm. going to be the entertaining guy with well, the persona. Well, also, have you seen, like, you know, Woody Allen? Have you ever seen Woody Allen? Like, documentaries about Woody Allen's yeah, home sure. life? It seems just like that. Right. Like, that's always what I was startling to me about Woody Allen is he comes from, like, that apartment. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel like there's a whole, like... American Jews like reinvented themselves in a very conscious way. Like Woody Allen, like was completely his whole early career is about like building this life that he did not come from. Right. And so I feel like I see a lot of Michael Ginsburg doing that. Sure. And he talks about it. So that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely think they're not not I think where I expected the third or I guess second season of the uh, second episode of the season to go to bring this new character in who is yeah me you know either. not not a you know not it's not directly confronting the race issue. It's not another woman that Don wants to maybe get involved in. It's this, you know, other character is going to be there to sort of compliment Peggy. And but that's what, that is what I feel like worry about the race part, is I'm like, Matthew Weiner knows about being Jewish. Yes. And so, like, <laughs> like we're going to give a whole episode to that. And not to, like, hammer it, and I'm sure I do think Don's going to have an episode, but it did, that was part of what made me feel so weird, where I was just like, they've been, we've been waiting five seasons for someone to actually, like, develop a, yeah. diff a non-white character. And right. then... So a little, we'll so, see. I have some patience. <laughs> I do. I do want to go back. Uh, we, we've we've covered the stones already. There were a few extra things I wanted to I wanted to go over there. One, I thought, uh, and we'll play. I have a little clip of it, but I thought it was interesting that the Heinz CEO had seized on "Time is on my side," which obviously it is. It was like you know relevant yeah. in 1966, but also again that was like the most screenwriting trope. Very on I the mean, nose about just, the theme yeah, of the whole yeah. episode and how you know time bearing down on these characters yeah. really. Uh, Michael and Megan are the only ones in the main cast who really actually do have time on their side. Yeah. Uh, but let, let's take a look at a little at a little clip of the song for people who don't know. Time is on my side, Rolling Stones. We have that one. Yeah, he looks just like the table. <laughs> <laughs> So there's, there's times on my side. Was that the trade wins or was that the stuff? <laughs> it's so easy to get them mixed up, I can't. I, I kind of spaced out, so I don't remember right. who that was. There. One, one oh, last, it was the Stones. Okay. Any, anybody else with comments about the Stones? Because there was one final bit of trivia I thought was interesting. Anything else about the Stones? No? Uh, the, I want to hear your trivia. The, the Who Sell Out was an album that came out in 1967, one year after this, this episode is set. And that had the whole album, in a lot of ways, is a parody of rock bands using their songs for commercials and parody sort of advertising. Uh, and on the cover is Roger Daltrey with a can of Heinz baked beans. Mm. Do you think that was an intentional 
joke that they were sort of goofing on Probably. that? Yeah, like that's why they picked this, yes. this particular product? I think they would be aware of that in all yeah. of their research yeah. of, of that era. And, and, and one Because you found it like with one Google search, right? Like how long did I you actually know, I had, that, that was uh, one I didn't uh, have to Google search because uh, I have the Who yeah. Sell Out album and uh, the whole album, even all the songs open and start with like fake jingles and ads using the songs and so uh, it was definitely a thing and, and they do reference in the episode uh, that the Rolling Stones did in the UK do a cereal commercial, I think is what Don said. Yeah. It was for Rice Krispies, and I did mm. manage to uh, find this clip today. Oh, so good. Let's, let's take a look at that mm -hmm. if we can. It's the actual Rolling Stones Rice Krispies ad that the Heinz CEO uh, was hoping to play on. Wake up in the morning, there's a snap around the place. Wake up in the morning, there's a crackle in your face. Wake up in the morning, there's a pop that really says, Rice Krispies to you. Then it was like. So we were we were talking during the clip here in the studio. Uh, today it's very common for songs to get repurposed in commercials, but it was probably also fairly common back then. I mean, a pro you know, I, I doubt Don would have even given it a shot if it, it was never happening. But now we're like today it's a sellout thing, right? Was it? Yeah, I feel like back then because there was all this, cause there was all those like. Your, um, they would do like the talk shows, and it would be like, well, like Mel Milton Burl or something, and mm -hmm. it, would, it would be integrated into the um, show. I mean, advertising was considered much more of an art form. I feel like back then, as we right. clearly, as clearly must be the case, because we're watching the show about it. <laughs> and so I feel like it, it doesn't seem like now we we know what is happening if we see a band on a yeah. commercial. We know it, it's it, the audience wasn't as jaded on things like. Product Everything was new. Placement, right? It was. It was all still. You you just liked seeing your favorite celebrities or hearing yeah. a Stone song, and it wasn't quite so jarring today. Yeah, if if like the cool new indie band immediately sold a bunch of their they songs. They probably made more money back then too. Probably like based on union rules these days, or however it's <laughs> like licensing fees or whatever. You know. Yeah. One one thing. One thing. For, uh, clever user in the chat room. Uh, lovely name. Uh, has, has raised this, and and I wanted to ask it too. Uh, as I mentioned at the at the very top of the show, this was the directorial debut of John Hamm. This was the first episode that he, Don Draper himself, has directed. Uh, obviously had something to do with the episode being not very Don focused. He was not in as much, so you know he could focus more on the direction. Is that what happens though? You can can you direct yourself? Usually, I think when you see the really? episodes where the uh, a person from the show directs, it's an episode that's not focused on their character. Maybe just really? they don't have to well, spend as much time preparing their lines. Slattery was the only other one that ever directed an episode. Well, just Mad Men, but I mean, even Breaking right. Bad, oh. like when Cranston. Well, I was saying because he's not really a main character, so it doesn't. I mean, yeah, and I they mean, don't the, really focus on. Even him. Roger will come in for a few right. scenes in a lot of episodes. So, uh, but I thought uh, there was there was some interesting stuff about the direction on this episode. The main one being. A lot of the sequences kind of had these quick jumps between, like these very radical kind of shifts mm -hmm. between scenes. The two that really stuck out to me, Betty getting out of the tub and we see her from behind. The body double. Obviously some sort of body double. Um, it's very uh, shining. Uh, yeah, and, and, and that jumps immediately to her at the doctor's office getting her prognosis. And then again, we had, and I mentioned it before, uh, Mike and his father praying, and then immediately in this weird jump cut where you could still hear them praying, but then you see it was Sally almost like I feel like it Betty. faded out, out and then in. Right, and it and, wasn't. It wasn't like a. And I mean, know, what what did odd. what did you think of that? Did you notice that? And what did you think overall? How did how did Ham do? He did very. I thought he did a good <laughs> job. I mean, I, I I I wasn't as I wasn't as focused on those until now that you're mentioning them. But I mean, it could have been having something to do with just sort of showing how separate those worlds are, maybe, or the mm -hmm. contrast between the worlds. Well, it was it was a scene I mean, of a father and son, and then a mother and daughter. Well, that's true. And uh, you know, and, and so there's parallels too. Yeah, and there was there was food is sort of an element that Mike was coming home was food, to yeah. like make dinner, presumably. And, and then, also, um, what's what's his name? Harry eating the. Chips in the car. Well, okay, Harry yeah. eating, yeah, stuffing yeah. his face. Like it, but also, there's the, there's the juxtaposition of their their household in the city being very stark, and he he really needed this job to feed his family, mm -hmm. and she lives in this like bloated house, and, and, you know, and they're eating and there's, like, Sundays, so it's shoving yeah. like it's it, it, and. They did mention Romney in the. Oh, I, 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 yes, I know, love that. So there's a little bit of like, you know, people dealing with austerity versus just sort of decadence, which is 
relevant to yeah. today's mm-hmm. time. That's and that, true. I didn't really even think to. I thought there was just a like a kind of a little winking joke that you know. Henry's on the phone. And he's like, "Screw Romney. We're not going there." Talking, but about, it's you know, funny George that Romney he would say that what? because she makes the point that he's a Republican. I mean, yeah, he's definitely a Republican. Henry yeah. Don's a Republican too. I mean, well, they're all. But, yeah, they're but all most of the main cast but is Republican. Harry is, is yeah. definitely. I mean, he. I mean, he could have been a Republican making fun of another. You know, just not thinking he was good enough. I mean, making fun of a fellow Republican. Yeah, that's why. But I felt like it very much felt like a liberal wrote that joke and put it into a Republican character's mouth, like it. It, it didn't yeah, I mean, who knows why ring. George Lindsay would not have wanted to have a meeting with uh, Ron, John, well, John Lindsay. Like, we're just going to assume Romney, yeah. that the writers are liberal. The, yes. the writers. And so I do feel like what? it was, because they, oh, they, they called him they call him a fool. Like, I feel uh, like yeah, it was like a little bit too, like, something? us inserting our agenda into a, a Republicans' Well, mouth. I thought like, that, it could have been enough yeah. to just be, like, to t- say, mention Romney's dad. I I'm th- a clown, because Romney's a clown. I thought that, too. But now that we're talking about the opulence versus austerity lifestyle, now I'm wondering if there was wasn't more I mean, I feel like they, they could have just mentioned now, Romney's. But I thought that I like mentioning Romney's dad because I think it is also not only is it about the opulent stuff, but it's about like legacy and, yes, and, and fathers and sons and being stuck in politics for generations. Yeah, and, and stuff like, yeah. And we're not, and that's how we've never moved past that. And when we watch the show, it's not, not that we're moving closer and closer to our time. So like, mm-hmm. it's like we are going to be connected. experiencing these things too. And so like, it was like this hand, re- hand re- linking us. I don't mind the mention of Romney's dad. I felt calling him a fool felt like. His character uh, might not say that. Yeah, and it was because he's like, a Republican. Yeah. Well, I don't think all Republicans think all other Republicans are not clowns. <laughs> but the so, one I mean, line he might have thought say. George Romney was a clown for whatever reason. And, and at this point in you know Michigan politics, perhaps Romney was a, maybe he was doing. Something. But at yeah. this point, like the one thing to hear him say is to call him a clown. So it it is like, true. It, it definitely felt at least like a little bit of a wink and a nod was, to contemporary yeah. viewers and to the demographic be, of the show and who like, hear the word the name Romney and may not even realize. The, yeah. you know, but there his was dad was political yeah. at the time, and you know, like just aren't going to even connect it to that. Uh, so yeah, I definitely thought that was an interesting thing to throw in there. But uh, and, and, any other any other thoughts about about him? Uh, I mean, I feel directing? like the way it was shot, that house was shot, seemed really different from the other way the rest of the show. Like how they showed her house. I mean, I haven't really seen her house much, but it, it, it seemed like a directorial choice. Everything about her world felt like a different show in an interesting way, and that had to. And that seems like a director. That had to have been not. directorial too. Like when when the phone rang, and and the camera pulls back, and you yeah. see them in this sort of huge hallway. Like everything seems very far away in the house, except for the yeah. dream and the weird kitchen yeah. and, and the tiny kitchen. Tight. But everything and when he's else in that the stairs and everything. Uh, yes, that staircase is so domineering. Yes, it's very domineering, and I I think that sort of loneliness feeling mm-hmm. was yeah. definitely a It's a bit like they moved to Downton Abbey all of a sudden. Yeah. It's just very, or Sunset very, Boulevard. It's very, yeah, oh my it's God. That would, be the, that would be my favorite show ever. If Mad Men <laughs> characters just moved into Downton Abbey. If Downton Abbey and Mad Men became it's 50, one. It's only about 50 years apart. We could probably figure out some sort of crossover. Uh, so we talk a little bit about Don and Megan, and then I, I, there's a couple other characters who, who didn't, didn't have starring roles, but I wanted to talk about as well. Uh, so I think this was the first time, from Don's perspective, maybe that we've seen divorce as a remaining social stigma. It sort of seems like Betty and Don got divorced. Everybody who knows them is sort of knows about it. We, it, I had forgotten even a lo- about the first season when Betty was so judgmental towards Helen Bishop, the yes. divorced neighbor. Uh, but then they're having dinner with the Heinz CEO or whoever's representing Heinz and his wife. Yeah. Uh, and it's, you know, well, Don was divorced and then mm-hmm. we met at the office. Well, that's none of my right. business. Yeah. She kind of cuts it off right there. Um, so, yeah, like, uh, interesting to bring that back now, whereas I feel like we had sort of almost We've forgotten about divorce divorces. being that because big an issue. Because we saw Roger. all these people divorced. Yeah, yeah, Roger and... Yeah, we've seen Roger and, and, and Don and, and yeah. Yeah, and Henry was, oh no, his wife died or something, right? His previous wife? Henry. Yes. Yeah, I, don't think she, I don't think he left her. And Duck got divorced too. Yes. Heavily, and what's the name? Almost got divorced, but didn't. Lane. Lane. Lane, yes. But he stuck it out. There's they had such a great marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there is like this missing role of like the women characters right now though, where like, because like that Heinz woman, the Heinz mm-hmm. wife, and then Henry's wife, they're a type, right? And then yeah. we've got all the pretty. We've like we've got like a lot of, I, uh, Peggy and Joan and Betty are such particular. Like they each represent something about progress and stuff. Right. But I kind of miss having um, 
Like the representat like the woman that he dated last season, the that he dumped. Bethany Van Nuys or Dr. Faye? Dr. Faye. Dr. Like Faye, I kind of yeah. missed having like a. Or the teacher the, the, from the previous. The season. teacher, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I didn't like the teacher. Maybe. Yo, I no, no, really she either. was crazy. I yeah. But she was a very so like an it, quirky idiosyncratic. Yeah, because now character. I do think it's kind of getting divided a little bit. Well, let me throw one more name at you because there there is another character that has started popping up. Uh, which is Henry's mother, Pauline. We had yes. seen her maybe once or twice before, and then I she was. I remember seeing her. She had. She, had, she was not yeah. nice. In she had two movie. scenes here, and then she's in the scenes from next week as well. So we're going to mm -hmm. be seeing even more. She, of Pauline. And, then, and, and we're going to see Jones' mom too next week. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and, she, and Betty does say she, he has an overbearing mother. Mm -hmm. He has a domineering mother or something. Right. And, but then she gives her that whole speech about the diet pills, and she says, "Well, then why don't you take them?" And she said, "I would if I could." Believe me, I she's would. Got a if weak, I could. She's got a weak heart. Mm -hmm. she a says. weak heart. Yeah. yeah. So what is that? Mean? Again, I think I do think. Uh, I mean, I it think is setting up the I'm dancing as fast as I can mm -hmm. plot line. Yeah. Do diet pills really help you lose weight? Is it real? Like I. Well, I mean, they the same did way that take doing them back to like, speed. Would. I mean, it's speed. So like, is it really going to be like if next week when Betty or whenever she comes back and she's got no and she's still skinny again, is it going to feel convincing? I don't really think if they did it, works. unless they set so up like, like six months has passed down. between yeah. these two episodes again. Yeah, or but something. it is how like if, if she, that's like you can just become a speed freak and then. Yeah, I mean you would have yeah. you would yeah. have mm -hmm. drastic side effects. I think but yeah, so. it's massively she's appetite suppressing. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I mean, she's not going to be able to sleep if she's taking this mm -hmm. stuff. She's going to be wandering around it's the house. Gonna she's really going to be. I mean, January Jones has been stretched on the show before, but this would be a real. This is that's not an easy thing to pull off and not make it. I can see her playing speed. I can see her being thing like pill popper. Have you ever seen I'm Dancing as Fast as I Can? I I have. I unfortunately have as well. It's the weirdest movie I've ever seen, and they are like. Freaked out on on these. Yeah, it, it, somebody uh, in the chat room as well brought up the uh, classic Save by the Bell, <laughs> where <laughs> Elizabeth Berkeley becomes a speed freak. Oh, this is I didn't watch that show. So. All about the perils of overdoing that performance. And family ties. Mm -hmm. Yes, but right. He did, but he didn't overdo it. He was wonderful in that episode. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, right, I, but it's, I just I don't remember that one. Cited that. Where, that's like the opening credits. You know when he like he swivels on his chair across. Oh, that's when he's that's speed when he, freaking. That's when he 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 takes speed Mallory's he, he takes Mallory's <laughs> diet pills. Right. And then he starts doing his homework all the time, and he can't stop and <laughs> oh my god if only mad men would bring back diet pills i'd try some <laughs> i'd try some yeah. why not at all get some more stuff yeah. done as long as, you're, as long as you're generally in control. Yeah. You think you can, you can, think you can I handle really it. I really feel like it's a direction that it is going, that she is dancing towards. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I, I just don't she, think, I do can. not see the fact Well, she definitely wants the quick fix. I mean, she's not someone that is going to examine her inner psychology. Right. Well, that, I mean, that's that's kind of what was interesting to me was sort of what I was saying at the beginning of the episode where the, the doctor's office scene just has you so primed to expect classic Betty behavior, which is, oh, I'm fat, not I'm going to really re-examine my life or what's really wrong or try to get to the root of this problem or just eat better and exercise more, but I'm going to go for this, like, quick fix, just doctor, just fix me, just give me the pill. And I felt like, though, when I first saw her talking about, like, gaining weight, I felt like... It was a mix of, like, she is older, she could just have put on weight. And I didn't totally, I was kind of on her side about, like, wanting the diet pills, feeling confused, like, I've, this has never happened to my body until the very end when she eats a Sunday, and you realize that she's actually been, really has just been picking out the whole well, time. Well, they did, they had that I, very telling shot of her with the bag of bugles, because I don't honestly know, when was the last time you saw Betty just snack? Like, it's never no, something she smokes. I, she smokes. She smokes, but it's never. Wine. And drinks wine. Yeah. Right. Why because I don't. I bet Henry doesn't like it. Or at least in the house, something? maybe not around the kids. And, it has, and that goes back to what we were talking about last week, which is the drinking and smoking. Smoke Generally, in this down. episode is just way. Because she wouldn't have yeah. gained so much weight if she were still thing. smoking as much. Yeah, now they're smoking doobs, <laughs> yeah. but they're not, uh, yeah. not not nearly as much. They're smoking yet, doobs and eating but twenty Roger's white drunk, castles. Roger drunk. Roger. Roger's still drinking, yeah. and, and and he even and comes back from the Mohawk Airlines meeting like, oh, those Mohawk boys. He'll never stop drinking. I don't think. Yeah, I think the implication is he's now even. He's continuing. He'll continually yeah. go down. And that. realizing now that he's too old to change. And, and they adapt. don't show Burt Cooper. They showed him in the first like season premiere. And he's he not part of the company meet. anymore. He sort he's of, a name, though, isn't he? Right. Yeah. In yeah, name only, but he quit. quit last season. Remember, With he took his shoes and he left? Oh, yeah. yeah. And like, so he's in name and he doesn't have an office. He doesn't have an office and he, yeah. Yeah. So to transition, because that was the last thing I, I really wanted to dig into was Pete and Roger. Oh, wait, I have one more thing, though, about oh, Megan. I find it... I'm totally confused about this whole, why are they trying to tell us that that didn't happen where Megan wiped up the milkshake when Sally, like, 
last season, when Don proposes to her, Sally spills her milkshake, Megan very patiently wipes it up. Don obviously, obviously feels like this maternal connection with her and sees her as this mother figure he didn't have and yeah. that bed he never was. Mm -hmm. And that is what makes him suddenly fall for his secretary, that he has ne which he has never done before. And suddenly, I feel like they have completely rewritten her character. And especially, and normally, last I felt that last episode too, where she was suddenly the sex pot, and I was like, I kind of like this though, that Dawn's just under her sexual mm -hmm. sway. Mm -hmm. But if we're actually gonna have an episode where um, it's all about her not being, a, her not even liking kids or being a good mother, I feel like we're really revising what happened, and it doesn't seem Mad Men like to to forget a detail like that. Yeah, I mean, I, it's weird. I, yeah, what to it, me. What well, the milkshake make? was such a central it image is why of he their proposed courtship. To her. Yeah. Like, obviously, like it totally was like, oh my god, mother figure. I need a mother figure. And she yeah. taught them and the French song, and she was she very was his good nanny. And she was just had so her come. good with the kids. And, and now yes. he's just like, well, she wouldn't be. I couldn't even let her near my children. <laughs> like, it's just well, but I, again, I, I think you could read that as being his reaction anyway. Is more like he's got this lingering connection with Betty that he can't can't find it. He, he tried to find it with Bethany Van Nuys, who's basically a younger version of Betty, and it didn't yeah. work. And now he's trying to find it with Megan, and it's still not there. And that, that's how I read that interaction that he's saying, you know, like, I mean, Megan, will, she'll try her best. But, but she is a different character. I mean, it's fine. I like the, director, the direction our character is going, but she is not what we saw when it happened. And I know people change and all that, but mm -hmm. I found it, I find they well, don't I, I thought it. the oddest quote from Megan this episode was, she, he, Don tells her, you know, Betty's going to be fine and she yeah. doesn't have it. And Megan says, she just needs to have something to call you about, which is really that was odd. very cold and a, a really yeah. bitchy thing to say. And also, Megan is very secure in in her relationship with Don. Right, that was that was a much more jealous and aggressive side openly. I mean, Megan, yeah. we've sort of hinted that there is she is an aggressive person, but she I does a good job of yeah. covering uh, it between. Showing a different side. Yeah, behind the girly. Yes. yes. I love the line, which I thought was so subtle, when, when, when Roger says, well, she's a fighter, and Don says, please. Like, it was mm -hmm. so good because you're just they both were just like it's she's Betty, not. which Betty we're talking about yeah. here yeah. and it wasn't that was and that was like, unlike a lot of the ep lines in this episode it actually didn't hit you over the head and it was genuinely funny and I watched it twice it made me laugh both times yeah, uh, chubby good. chubby werewolf in the uh, in the chat room is uh, is making a case against this. He he thinks uh, Megan is just de defying our expectations of what she was going to become. That we thought she was going to become this like very pliant. I know that. That's Betty fine, but like, I know, but they still live in the world that this happened in. Mm -hmm. Like Don was still there. I wasn't. There. They can change the character. They can defy the expectations. But like Don. It, we did know that she was, was the kid's like nanny, mm -hmm. yeah. and now they're like pointedly being like, well, she. Like I just feel like the lines didn't quite match up. I think it's I, fine. She can defy. I find I like what's happening. I with think her. that's fair. <laughs> um, back to back to Pete and Roger, uh, just just very quickly, because we're we're obviously this is leading somewhere that that they're they're sort of at war, and I actually read there's one moment. Uh, it's the scene where. Don tells him, like, oh, Betty has cancer, of course, prematurely, because she, mm -hmm. she doesn't. Uh, and he kind of uses that to segue away from this monologue that Roger has, where it sort of sounds like we may be setting up him leaving. That he's like, he kind of doesn't, really, he's not really into it anymore, he doesn't know what he's still doing there. Uh, do, do, do you think that's where the season is going to go? That is Pete actually going to manage to successfully oh. get Roger out? That'd no, be so awful. No. That'd be like the worst I thing to happen. I don't think. I don't see that coming. I th I do think it's leading up to some kind of big blow, meltdown, or yeah. crisis of of sorts yeah. that's going to manifest in a very uncomfortable way. <laughs> but I don't see him leaving. I don't. I, I feel like he he actually he's not effective anymore as in his job but I still but he ha does have this fighting spirit in him to hang on to it and and we have so there were small of, yeah, ways that we did off. see there may be potential for a change in him uh, he has a nice little scene with Peggy where he actually congratulates her on mm -hmm. hiring and, this new yeah. guy and uh, that's I, when was the last time Peggy and Roger had a yeah. genuine when she asked one on for one an interaction? Office. The one time yeah, she right. asked for an office. Is that what season one? Season two? That was a long time ago. Right. And she so, said, yeah, so. "I want, I need an office," and he's like, "Well, then ask for it." Like that's right. what you do. Like kind of, he kind of mentored her 
very briefly is on his way out the door when he did that. But right. I, yeah. there was something about Pete, that. Because of Pete, he says, I loved that kid. I brought that kid in, and he's that's what he's so hurt by, that he feels like he mentored Pete, and now Pete's angling for his job. And he never felt that with, with Peggy. But it's mm -hmm. so cool with Peggy, because like, I feel like they've done such a good job of, like, she is, like, such a symbol of so many things, but she really is so fully integrated in the show. And, like, they really... Like every time, even when they bring up like you're the ambitious woman, you you are this, you mm -hmm. that, it never feels like oh they're just reminding us who she is. Like she is such a part of the team, and like they're like slow, begrudging giving over of respect to her. Like I love watching every mm -hmm. time, and they just do like her. So I, it is nice to see yeah. her actually um, fitting in. I I find if they get rid of Roger, it's gonna be such a problem. He is the I don't joy. Think they'll never be able to get rid of him from <laughs> the show. But he's the joy of the show. Like, obviously, yeah. you're just waiting for him. He has the funniest him. lines. Yeah. yeah. The other, the other thing I thought was interesting is season one as well, they had discussed bringing on a Jewish uh, employee and he had right. immediately poo-pooed it. Like, oh, that, yeah. that'd be what are, It's like a joke to him. And now right. he's not only into it, but he thinks it makes him more modern. And So we have tracked well, it. Was that when I was Jewish, though, right? Danny, Danny, was, Danny Jewish. was Jewish. Yeah. Uh, and he, he was, was hired Roger's because, hire because yes. of Jane's cousin. Or right. Something. But was Kinsey... A Jewish character? No. No. Oh, that's it. There's no Jews. There were no Jews at no. the beginning, and it they was had to find it was one an issue. In the mailroom. Right. It was an issue because they they had the, <laughs> oh, had to find the department the store, yeah. the the Menken, Ra Rachel Menken, Rachel Menken, yeah. Rachel Menken. Yeah, yeah. and they had to find a Jew. The only one they had, yeah, was from the mailroom. Okay. Right. And but Roger treated it as a joke. I mean, there was it's ridiculous that they would have a, a Jewish mm -hmm. staff member on their yeah. floor. Yes. And I mean, now he's it's. I mean, he's still treating it as a joke. But he, he is, but now it's a joke in the way that now it's real and I'm going to goof around about it. As yeah, and that guy's going to like take over the company. I mean, there right. could be something interesting. Well, I guess it's that guy, the copywriter, so it's not directly competitive with Pete. I'm looking forward to Pete blowing a circuit board in some way. Like, he is a crazy person. <laughs> they're, they're, and he right. just is. Like, I don't care how much on top of his game he seems right now. He is crazy. And like he always delivers. He always and, and all three episodes we've seen that <laughs> he does the pressures, every season. The, 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 the pressures tightening he's around. So him. upset by everything. Like he yeah. can't ever have a good time. Everything bottling he's so up. Yeah. Competitive. And he's he so has a sad, uh, rich him. person's life. Yeah. You know, like mm -hmm. that sort of loveless family that owned all of Manhattan. Like he comes from that huge, and they and they don't have a dime left. Like yeah. there's something. So, and he's a non-creative guy around creative people, but he actually and he's a creative. frustrated creative well, he's, person. He's also we're seeing. Uh, the last of a breed. He's a young guy that was really eager to jump in with this establishment crowd and be yeah. one of those guys. And there was that amazing shot last year of was Peggy taking off with her new hippie I loved friends that. I loved and that Pete shot. going over and, and talking to Sterling and all those yes. other guys. And there, there's the glass partition sort of in between them. Yeah. So yeah, he's sort of representing what none of the and none of the younger kids that we're seeing now at like the Stones concert mm -hmm. or Megan's friends, none of them have any, any of interest but there's in being a part of Pete. There's a Pete world. in every generation. I don't know if that's the last of a Pete. Like I mean, a, in the like show, a, yeah. like a prep school, yeah, but like a prep school kid who was part of the establishment. I right, feel like who grew up direction. around privilege. Yeah, and, that yeah. that is. I mean, we have Mitt Romney and stuff like it's, that. I mean, is, yeah. He's closer to, like, Henry Francis than anyone. Right. It is a else. cultural type, but Pete's the sort of only young person on the show that is really in that, firmly yeah. in that world. Of, he expects to be Roger one day. Yeah. Preferably sooner, rather. Yeah. He doesn't want to be Roger. Like, he's disdainful of Roger. Right. But he wants that... that that yeah. position. He yeah. wants to be the he guy in the run, suit he running the company. Head yeah. And he doesn't, you know, what, what Abe is talking about or what, you know, Mike is doing or what all these other characters are about yeah. is sort of not what he's about at all. Uh, so two two quick things, more more trivia that I wanted to bring up. Uh, one, the girls at the Rolling Stones concert don't know who Charlton Heston is, which I thought was really strange because wouldn't he have been a big marquee star in 66? He was yes. just in Greatest Story Ever Told, Agony in the Ecstasy, Major Dundee. Wouldn't it be like young girls not knowing who Russell Crowe is now or something? I don't know. That didn't that was, or maybe in the chat room, somebody can explain that to me. I, that one didn't strike me because I don't. I guess I don't. I didn't know enough about Charlton Heston's career to know. Because this was like. But he, they were he how was not like 15? the old guy at this. No, point. he was a, in he the was mid sixties. He was a. But they yeah. How old they were fifteen. Yeah, because they're. I mean, they're making Don seem like the old guys. So right. I mean, he would, Ben Hur would have been. I think 61, 62, oh, So not so that, that is much really earlier. Yeah. He was like at the height of his fame and power, and and, and El Cid. Ben Hur was fifty nine. El Cid was sixty one. But so it could like, also be that they're just like Ben Hur is what they're rebelling against too. Like everything if they're the Rolling Stones. Right. Well, it's late fifties. Yeah. So and, and, and he was a fifties star. But I'm saying you know even a ninety star teenager. Yeah, it's would true. Know they would know today. It would, it would just be in the zeitgeist, and you wouldn't. Right. Know to I mean, avoid George Clooney it. may not be the the hippest. You know, he's not Ryan Gosling, oh, yes. but young girls would know who he is. Anyway, yeah. I, I thought yeah, that, that is kind of weird. That was an odd moment that they picked. 
Heston over actors who would have been much easier to like to not picked, know who they were. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could have picked Richard Widmark in a second, and the, yeah. yeah, the young girls then wouldn't have known who that is. I found yeah, all. True. I found it all forced. That's why I found that whole little that, conversation that, forced. That moment, and then uh, they, they, Tony Tracy in the chat room saying, "Well, they were more into music than movies." Well, fair enough. But again, I think even you, you know heard, kids you today heard, yeah. who are all about music would still know who, who still know. Yeah, like Russell Crowe or Ben Affleck. And like nobody's all about just one thing. Like you, we we live in a world. And where they watch. Like, they watch yeah. Bewitched. Bewitched. Exactly. Yeah. They watched Bewitched. They they were able to make. Now a, that was a. I thought that was a funny moment. When they yeah. compare him to, and they go to Darren immediately. Yeah. Like, and, and not only do they call him Darren, but again, only if you watch uh, Bewitched as I as I used to, uh, they call him Durwood, which was yeah. Endora's sort of put down name for him. Like his mother in law sardonically referred to him as Durwood. Because mm -hmm. um, it's not his real name. His real name is Darren. So again, yeah, like. So overall, there were a lot of great moments in the episode, but it's, I'm not giving it my A plus mark as in comparison. I mean, Even I think it's my favorite show. I'm saying that's yeah. the world. And, and I, love I Mad Men. It, it was <laughs> do no wrong. It was a little on the nose, but I enjoyed the scene of Harry uh, and Don at White Castle, where Harry's eating twenty burgers. But he, that's and he doesn't want to like... go home. Oh, I find it. I mean, it's fine. <laughs> I find it like uh, we're getting into sitcom territory with Harry at this point. I really do. We're just yeah. like, mm -hmm. especially when he comes back, and I mean, we've already kind of established that too. Like. I want, I think they are a little confused about what they're doing with Don right now, and like, I like it, either I want Don to be terrifying again, or I want him to be like, checked out, but like, Harry trying to, it's just, something is not tracking with me, but I also ultimately feel, there's something, I like this show, I, this show is wonderful, but I find there's something must be flawed with this episode if we're still working around Fat Pe Betty. Like, I feel like <laughs> yeah. everything we're saying is these moments, and Fat Betty is obviously the focal point of this episode. Yeah, this yeah. And we are Fat kind of Betty having episode. Fat, and we it should have been titled Fat Betty. Fat Betty, yeah. Yeah. And we're not like, I, I feel like we should be here like, oh my God, Fat Be Betty is the best thing I've ever seen, and it should be unanimous, and we should be blown away. And I just don't think that is a yeah. general it feeling. We work. are just kind of picking these little moments that are just like. I think part of it was uh, per, uh, was technical, like you were saying, though. That well, what, it was just very obvious that she had yeah. this prosthetic. Well, well, what about these two? Subtle. What if you had one episode with just Fat Betty thinking she's fat? And then in the next episode, she had the cancer scare. So you could still get the cancer I would like, scare story. I would have preferred that. But you would have had more time to adjust to Fat Betty, Betty just being unattractive and feeling I would have, unattractive. I would have preferred that, because I, think that I would was have been totally into Betty mm -hmm. feeling invisible, like receding <laughs> from what, everything she'd ever known. I would have, I mean, it would have had to be a little the waddle less. waddle like, much, The yeah. quilted jacket and all, the, it was and just the hair, into the, the hair yeah. being teased up, like yeah. to kind of like elongate this. It was so fat this. Monica yeah. and Friends, where you're mm -hmm. just like, it was a little, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, Chubby Whirl in the, in the chat room advises, and I'm going to recommend everyone do this in their head, to sing Fat Betty to yourself to the tune of Black Betty. And it's mm. actually quite amusing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and also, like, I, when I was writing my recap, I was like, do I call her Fat Betty? And, like, everyone, like, every single review is Fat Betty. Fat Betty. She is, it is firm. And I, I read, I think it was maybe Slate, I forget what blog was where they actually titled it The Weight. That's what they called <laughs> this, uh, this episode. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, la last thing I want to mention is, uh, and I always make a, make a thing out of the closing song, because I feel like they always pick it for some sort of, there's always some hidden meaning there. Uh, and this week, again, it was a little on the nose. Oh, it I was found it, yeah. 16 going on 17. The sound of music. From the sound of music. Uh, but not just that song, like the line that it came in on was like spelling out what Betty is going through. Like the line that they actually said was, like practically said, Betty sits in her kitchen feeling adrift. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah it, was, it was, and I mean, if you really get down to it, it's a, it's a young man telling a young woman, like, well, he's already 18, so she should just do everything he says because yeah. he's smarter and older and more experienced. And it's like, that really is exactly what the episode was sort of about. Uh, yeah. Totally unprepared am I to face a world of men. Timid and shy and scared am I of things beyond my ken. I need someone older and wiser telling me what to do. You are 17 going on 18. I'll depend on you. Those yeah. Are those it was so... That's, it was a weird slip. That's very on the nose for me. Yeah. And they usually would not be as blatant with the closing song. Yes. Thoughts? Yes? Everybody agrees? I, 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 agree I, I was so startled by that. I was yeah. just like, absolutely not. It just seemed it seemed like an interesting the whole, I thought that the whole episode was like that. Though, it was. That everything it was, was like spoon-fed to us. I know, but it wasn't. I know. Just, Why did they do that? Because it could have been. Is it because they're I trying really to get new viewers? Like the new, like. I think they were, I really think they were 
I really think the Fat Betty thing, it was confusing to them, too. I think they were trying to do this thing, yeah. and they didn't know what to do with it, and to like, and you really, it is really two episodes that are happening, because everything else around Fat, we can't deny the weirdness of the Fat Betty plot line, and then we're trying to be normal everywhere else, and I just think that's gonna be a problem, and then, I, I don't know. I mean, because they, I mean, I, they, they could have easily shot around her pregnancy. I mean, they do that all the time on TV. Like, and, and, she, would, and she probably wouldn't have I been think, showing that much at yeah. this point. But I think yeah. he saw it as a challenge. I think I think the idea of being like, like let's use we're going to show her aging, like, yeah. is interesting. It just, like I said, I want him. If he's going to do that, make it so she's yeah. never thin and again. And thematically, it really like, does I, link up yeah. with the rest of the season of her yeah. now suddenly feeling old and unattractive and unappealing. The world, the kids are creeping up behind, and you know she's feeling yeah. her age. And, and I wrote in like my review that one problem I have with this like whole aging thing with Mad Men is that I don't think anyone looks older, like in a shocking way where. No one, the actors seem ageless. <laughs> they, time is not passing in their real lives somehow. And so, like, they all look when so they good. keep talking about yeah. Don aging, I feel like I always thought Don was 40. He seemed 40 from the first season. He seems 40 to me now. Like, I don't feel he's still so handsome. And so, I did like seeing some character actually be affected by time. Change, yeah. But then it was just like, let's go to Even Perry's Henry house. has like a six pack. Yeah, he's so handsome. You know what I mean? Yeah, like totally. Henry they're very, they're, still looks good. Good looking to pull off a show that's about everyone getting older. It's fine because it's like a beautiful Henry's show. Henry's already older looking with his frosty hair, but his body is like, yeah. yeah. Freaking good for <laughs> that age. Yeah. Yeah. So like and Roger looks amazing. Yeah, like Roger's every, great. Because every it's a beautiful show, and that's and the whole point of it. They're all so good looking they're people. All good looking I mean, they're yeah. all you they're know they were like cast in, but in like some in ways a, to be I, good I went back and watched like an episode after this from the first season, and they don't look different. Like the actors yeah. do not change. Because normally, you know, you go back and you're just like, oh, they did age, and I didn't realize it. They didn't age. I mean, even in Sex in the City, they looked older. Oh, I mean, by the time well, that, that's it's just like her face turns into a different person. Like a <laughs> creature. <laughs> but also, like, Sopranos, like, Tony ages. Like, yes. to James Gandolfini gets heavy, and, yeah. and he, as each season passes, he gets so tired. He's just so tired, and the weight that he's carrying around with him, it's, it's like, embodied in his actual physical being, and his hair starts to, like, get thinner and thinner, <laughs> and it's yeah. so interesting to watch, and Carmela ages, and... I don't know how to fault the show for not casting actors who are who are going to age, who are, who are like treating their bodies terribly, smoking, yeah. drinking. Like, and I mean, yeah. I, know, I mean, I understand the TV too, and you yeah. suspend disbelief. But I did kind of. If they're going to talk about it and talk about it and talk about it, like yeah. So we got before we close out, we got a question from the chat room. Uh, they want everybody on the panel. Will Don cheat on Megan at any point? Yes. During yes. this. Season? Oh, that yeah, was so. my question last week. Yeah. Because I don't. I, I it's a, it's such a know. Mad Men standard. It, it, so that you say yes, I and mean, you said yes last I, week. I, I said yes last week. You yes. said so you're saying yes. I'm in the I don't know category because I feel like his his compulsion, his sexual compulsion, seems so fixated on Megan this season. I think he's already making excuses though why he does you know why there was there's problems with her. There was a teaser though. Yeah. Well, and the teaser. he gets, and and, and it's it's because of the Rolling Stones, but he does give that young girl his business card. Mm -hmm. yeah. And is that going to at some point oh, come back? Oh, that would be scandalous. Is that going to come back? Well, maybe even if they don't get together, but will she call him? Well, he almost, will she show up at the office? He almost is there, hit is there, on um, the um, Anna's niece, remember, California yes. Yes. Don. Stephanie. Stephanie, yeah. who is a really pretty actress, but she's like a college girl, mm -hmm. like a co-ed. Mm -hmm. And he had no problem... Getting all he's never that. real, and, and yeah, <laughs> notably when he was talking to this girl at the concert in this episode, he's using it as like it's like a focus group. Like, well, how does how do the how do you feel when you listen to the Rolling Stones? And he sort of wasn't doing his usual. But he's always cooled on. Like he right. always did. like I know, like, and I think that was intentional. He is always a cool. He's obviously cooler than Harry, mm -hmm. and that girl's obviously drawn. She, the other girl's making fun of Harry, and this girl's drawn to Don. Mm -hmm. I think there's a whole. I mean, Megan could also leave him. I like this whole this season even more than all the others. I'm so, I'm so intrigued by what's going to happen because right now, there's a there. It's been the same thing. Like they're just saying, time marches on. We're all going to die. It's horrible. Like life's horrible. Yeah. It's like how they're going to figure out how to ch how to make that. It's going to have to get us. yes, chaotic um, and eventful again. Yeah. at some point for sure. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think we'll see this girl again. Well, they wouldn't have made such a big really. point. I don't think we're gonna see her. Again. I don't think they would have made such a big point of the business card exchange unless they were setting up that she's gonna. It, it, the same thing with the photo of Dolores that we were discussing last week. That yes. Lane kept Dolores's photo. 
that you, you always forget. They, they make such a point of showing you that they've kept it. But then the girl, the pay. girl didn't like. Would that girl be interested in Don? I think she thinks he's like over the hill. Well, I mean, well, who knows like, why yeah. she'll even use the business card or show up? Maybe she'll think he can. Why did he give her the card again? She, she asked for it so she could try to weasel her way into the right. She thought area. if having a business card would make it easier for her right. to get okay. backstage. But I think okay. Lee might never see Lane's girl again though either. I feel like you that may could not. just be. You may not. I like the idea of then like just letting Lane have that in his wallet and you just mm -hmm. walk every time you see him you're like oh yeah it's in his wallet and this is like part mm -hmm. of his background of his character now. Yeah. They don't that's always true. make the, those they don't things happen. They, that's like, it, there's the one thing that they're very good about is yeah. they, they don't necessarily, not everything is foreshadowed exactly. Yeah. So you never quite know if the, something's going to come back. Remember, we last season, it's funny, we debated whether Abe would ever, after his first and Abe appearance, was there. will Abe ever be back? Because they could have just, he was just some guy Peggy met at a and party. And Abe's first. Jewish, right? With a name like Abe, it's pretty likely. I so. No, you can go either way. You could, you could. Definitely go either way. I don't know. But now Peggy's going to. Dump Abe she's from Michael. Gonna, she's gonna <laughs> jump Jews. I think she's gonna <laughs> she's jump. She's gonna jump. <laughs> uh, poor, so, poor Abe, he's so cute, but Michael's cute too. Michael's cute. I think mm -hmm. there's a lot. Michael's there's definitely a lot there of, to be a lot of foil. chemistry between Peggy and Michael. I, I yeah. did love that scene when when she was hiring him, and I didn't know what was going on. I was just like, oh my god, he's like mm -hmm. a hot mess yeah. in, in the genuine way, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, here think, are we. Are we at our I think we got to wrap it up. Our We've been an point. hour and 15, which is a little long for us. We did it long. Uh, longer than last week, which was two episodes to discuss. So obviously, Fat Betty had uh, some interest <laughs> for people. Uh, so thanks very much for joining us. We'll be back next Monday, as always, uh, 7 p.m. live, 10 p.m. if you're on the East Coast. Thanks to the entire panel, Jamie and uh, Janie and Starly. Confusing. A lot of, a lot of E endings. Yeah. Uh, I'm Lon Harris. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on This Week in Mad Men.